Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock here on Labor Day, having a nice uh, Labor Day relaxing weekend, but hockey doesn't stop. No, it sure doesn't. We have a game today. We, we, we probably usually, we usually have these out a little earlier, but with a Labor Day long weekend, we have time with our family and all of those things like that. Who's we, do you say? Well, I don't know how you don't know this already, but this is Joe Bork. This is Professor Joe Bork, one of the finest uh, hockey minds in the land. I am deep in between the two of us. We are BPAL. That's pearls of wisdom. Um, check out our other stuff. You can see that our predictions have been pretty bang on so far. Um, all, so we're going to continue on that prediction vein and go with the new, with the Eastern Finals we have now. Kind of a surprising on one side, not on the other side. Mr. The, the said Boric here picked Tampa to win the cup before this before this all started. Uh, did you not? I said I think they would make it. I never said that I thought they would win. I said I think they would be the Eastern team to make it. Oh, where yeah. where uh, Vegas is actually the team that I tweeted out. Uh, on Twitter saying, I think they're going to win the cup. They lost yesterday, but that's also because they put Flurry in for some reason uh, out of nowhere. Uh, even though he played well, that's still a throw off a little bit to put in your other goalie out of nowhere. But that's not here nor there. We're talking about Tampa. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was an interesting game, but yeah, it actually kind of has parallels to this game because these two teams kind of have the same structure as far as differences in how they play the game, am I right? Tampa's more known for their offensive aggression. Islanders, not so much. Um, between the two, uh, with how the Islanders have got here, and both of us being Philadelphia fans, um, which way do you think you'd be leaning in this series? And uh, what do you think uh, each team would have to do to not win the series, there's my question. What would have to happen to make sure that either team, like what would be their greatest weakness or something you've seen in the way they play that would prevent them from winning this series? Well, the Islanders would be they don't play a complete game. They still haven't played at all a complete game other than the game they won the last game. But like they haven't played in all the games. We usually had at least one good period. And then, or a 10-minute stretch that was really good. If you give Tampa a 10-minute stretch that is really good, they could score five goals. And right. then you're pretty much just out of it at that point. So that's, uh, that's their Achilles heel. They can't have those stretch periods that they're like one of those pitchers in baseball that blows up one inning and, and then just comes back. But at that point, they're already dead and gone. So, like, they need to, in order for the Islanders to have any chance of winning this series, they have to play a full 60 minute game. And due to the fact that Tampa added that physicality, did they give up way too much for a lot of these guys? Probably, but if they win the Stanley Cup, they're not going to care. Right. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's one of those things. You gave up a first, I think, for Goudreau and Coleman. That might be a bit, but much, but. The point being is they needed those types of players. They got them. That's what's helping them get over the hump. Those are the same things the Flyers now need to do, just like Tampa did, moving into next year, because they have the same issues that Tampa Bay had. At, in, um, in, uh, they have the they same have exact the same issues exact Tampa Bay had, had last year. Last year. So, so uh, uh, the Islanders, Islanders are the team that are good are at, at some of that some physicality that play and all that stuff. So... Uh, that's why Tampa matched themselves up where I don't think the Islanders match up against them well at all. Because the only way they would have matched up well against them is if they still didn't have that physicality. Those guys that they literally have just because they're bruisers, like for Luke Shen, for example. The only reason he's on the team is because he's a, he's a guy that's just there to annoy you and hit you because they already have enough skill. They don't need somebody else like that. That's the other reason Brandon Coburn, the lumberjack, is still on the team as well. So... The they just stay in for the physical aspect, and that's what Tampa was very smart overpaying, maybe, but still very smart to get those players because that's what's going to put them over the top, in my opinion. Yeah, um, all good points. Uh, you know, by by uh, the guys you are talking about, of course, are uh, Blake Coleman, Barclay Goudreau. 
Patrick Maroon, and then the up uh, the uh, kind of uh, outcoming of Anthony Sorelli. Uh, all of these guys are like, and and even a, a, a guy that doesn't get talked about that they drafted two guys actually, Mitchell Stevens and Carter Verheeg. All of these guys to- kind of totally changed the flavor of that Tampa Bay team. Um, you know, and uh, it shows. They're, they're playing a much different uh, game than they lost to Columbus, where basically they played all offense and uh, a l- very slick, speedy team. Nothing wrong with that. But um, balance seems to always be necessary in the playoffs. Um, Dallas is really showing that now on the opposite side of things, where Dallas was that grinding team that couldn't score, but they added a little more slickness to their game in the playoffs. Um, and look where they are now. As far as the Islanders are concerned, it's it's basically the same thing all the time when it comes yeah. to the Islanders, right? Uh, it, it's whether they're going to be able to play that neutral zone trap against their opposition or not. Simple as that. It's a it's a, an incredibly good weapon. But um, if a team finds some cracks in it, or if they don't play it perfectly, they could definitely be in big trouble. And um, they do have their own depth as far as physicality is concerned. They've got the Tampa Bay. Uh, they've got, uh, sorry, they've got uh, their, the, probably the best fourth line, as people like to say, with Sisikis, Martin, Clutterbuck, one of the best names in ho- hockey, uh, as people like to say. Uh, they brought in Pajot, who's small, but, you know, he, he, he was, Pajot might have been maybe the most important. The, one of the best pickups of the deadline, yeah. Absolutely. Two teams have picked up great picks at the deadline. Uh, Blake Coleman, like I said, they gave up a first for not for not for Coleman, but for Goudreau, and a lot that lift that raised a lot of eyebrows out there. When you know, because Goudreau is pretty much a third fourth line guy, but it turns out it looks like the talks exact talks that they needed. That's also going to motivate the player if he just realizes he got traded to a top contender for a first round pick. That's going to be used as more motivation because you're going to be honored to be have a first round pick traded for you. I would think that would be a good motivational thing too. Sure. Yeah. Um, as far as goal, let's go look at the goaltenders here, and this is where I think that I start to go towards. Not even close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really where I think the pick really lies here, as far as who's going to win this series. Uh, Varlamov did not look the best against Philadelphia. Is that right? No, I don't even know if he's going to start because, I mean, the guy that clinched it is Grice. He's the more rested guy. And, I mean, it seems like they play good in front of him as well. The Islanders have played fine in front of both of their guys, so why not let him start the first game? Um, But either way, it doesn't matter who they go with, unless if they were able to put in the young kid, which they're not, uh, and he could somehow – get hot as a firecracker like Demko did to match Vasilevsky. They, they don't really have a guy that you think is going to match Vasilevsky. So they have to win within the trenches to win. Not If it's a goalie battle, they're not going to win. Yeah, Sorokin, uh, yeah, you're talking about there, that uh, eventually is going to be their big guy. And the reason why, you brought up a very good point. We were doing a video before, the likelihood of why they gave Varlam off that huge contract which i thought was way too much but um because he can help that sorokin kid that is really mm-hmm. what the islanders are exactly all about, right? yeah. he's their diamond in the rough he's their everything uh if i don't know there aren't i don't know if there's any other organization that is really depending on one player as far as a kid is concerned more then the Islanders are on Sorokin here because uh, if he doesn't pan out, they could be in big trouble. Um, as far as Tampa Bay, the rest of their uh, team is concerned, uh, they, I, I th- on paper, you got to have their Tampa Bay's defense with Sergachev and Head- Headman and uh, McDonough. Sure that's another guy that's supposed to be back in. Uh, you got to have that over the Islanders, Pelic, Pulak. Uh, uh, what's his name? Off the top of my head, Mayfield. Friend. Mayfield, not these are just not names that pop out at anybody really. Yeah, 
No. Uh, you also have Shattenkirk, who's had a pretty good playoffs, too. Shattenkirk. Tampa, yeah. Um, so he's really stepped up in this postseason and looked good. And then the games Coburn's been in for what he's supposed to do, uh, he's looked good. Like I said, all he's supposed to do is be a brute force on the ice. Nobody wants him to do anything else because they already have enough skill. It's just be a br- if you're in, be a brute force on the ice. We literally don't need you to do anything else and don't want you to do anything else. We just want you to focus on that. And he does a good job at doing that and blocking shot. Um, so, and McDonough coming back in, that makes them even more dangerous because McDonough's playing very, very well right now, like the old Ryan McDonough, it seems. And when it ha- so you now have two top defensemen, like number one defenseman with the way McDonough's playing. And you really have three because you have Ryan McDonough, Victor Hedman, and then it is very, very arguable. And I would already say Mikhail Sergachev is a number one defenseman. So you really have three number one defensemen in this playoffs because of the way they're playing. So uh, that's hard to beat in itself, especially when you have a guy that could win the Vezina. As you, did they announce? I don't think they announced it. When do they announce the Vezina? <laughs> uh, they have the, who's going to be who? Who they're choosing for the Vezina, yeah. or who wins the Vezina? Who wins the Vezina? Uh, it's going to be after. The, I think it's going to be after the playoffs. I'm pretty sure. But... Is it because they're starting to announce stuff now? That's why I was asking, but. Yeah. Either way, he could win the Vezina, and he has three number one defensemen with him. So I don't think those two mix for the Islanders having a lot of success. But on paper, the Islanders shouldn't win this. About the only way they're going to win this is again, is just that spot system is going to take them down. Uh, not out of the realm of possibility because it is he does he's a gr- amazing coach. Uh, they he gets his players to play the uh, the system he feels best yeah. is going to win better than maybe anybody out there possibly uh, Tortorella being the only one. Uh, he is an incredible coach and he and he seems to have them play well. But I just think that like the flip side saying, of that though is Cooper's a very good coach that seems to have matured. Like the one thing was he would be too loose point. at times, where now he seems to stay strict when he knows he should stay strict. Yeah. So that uh, that's uh, I think last year might have actually done wonders for John Cooper in terms yeah. of sometimes when you get beat down, you come back up stronger. So yeah. and that's kind of what they've done here. But the other thing is I left out Sh- Shankirk at 34 points this year and was one of the better uh, one year pickups that you paid at one, what 1.5 million or something like. So you could argue that he played like a <laughs> one defenseman. And if you can win that point, Tampa has four yeah. Number one defenseman, if you can give somebody that argument. So that the Islanders don't really match up too well against Tampa. That's why yeah. I didn't think they had a chance. And I've talked to a couple of fans of other sites I work for, and they don't think they have a chance. <laughs> so it was more, yay, we got past the Flyers. Uh, cool. Okay, we got to the Eastern Conference Finals. Great. <laughs> now let's bring this kid in and see what we can do. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, even if they have to, Bogosian's not like. He's not somebody to throw on a scrap pile. He can play. Uh, uh, yeah, they got a pr- they, their defense is unreal. Uh, on paper, their forwards are deeper. There really isn't a spot on paper that the Islanders have them at. Uh, Other it's than just the fourth a, line, maybe like you maybe. Said. Maybe yeah, maybe yeah, it's maybe. not that it's not that yeah. far. Verheeg, uh, again, I'm going off the top of my head here, but uh, Verheeg Paquette. And uh, it's not a bad fourth line. It's it's actually really good. It's one of the better fourth lines in the league as well. So, and not only that, yeah, that's why that's the only place you're beating your opposition. At. They had well last game they had Maroon, Verhe, and uh, Paquette. So obviously, if there that's the fourth line, that's pretty close to that's a pretty yeah. solid fourth line. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, I guess the only thing left now, we haven't really left it hidden till the end here. <laughs> I'm taking Tampa Bay, and uh, I think uh, I, I think the Islanders' system will get them one game. Tampa Bay in five for me. What about for you? Yeah, I was going to say five games, too, because I don't think uh, – I mean, we saw how lucky we've been predicting a sweep. Steele already got that wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Already got that. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would say five games. In a playoffs, you really don't want to predict a sweep. If you predict it normally 99% of the time, it don't happen. So uh, I would say five games. 
Yeah, Tampa Bay in five. Well, that's our full 42%, boys and girls. Um, tell me what, tell us what you think down in the comments section. It's been a little light there. Again, we'd like to talk to you down there. And uh, thank you for subscribing, coming over to our Patreon, uh, heading over to uh, steelflyers.com, www.steelflyers.com, where you can find our information. You can find all Steel's uh, um, podcasts. And eventually, soon, very soon, you're going to find one of the finest sports websites you have ever seen in your life. Tell you from what they're telling me, this is going to be like I, I am not even over exaggerating here. This is fantastic. I'm excited for it just as a fan of sports, let alone the fact that I get to be part of it. So head over there, you can find all of our information. Just go to Friends of Steel, you can find Joe's stuff, you can find my stuff. Come over to Patreon, get the Patreon app, and uh, we're having fun making money over there doing bets. If you like the betting, Joe, you got anything else, bud? No, uh, other than enjoy the game tonight, uh, it's going to be a good one. It's a, it's going to be a fun series to watch because of the Islanders system, probably, where the other series definitely plays out more on paper as a fun series to watch as a whole, where this one's more because of the system the Islanders play. Yeah, I think you brought up a good point about, uh, bef before we go off, I did want to mention that about Cooper coming and having a different face this year. Yeah, he definitely looks a lot more serious than he ever has. And he does – I don't think he gets enough credit for how great of a hockey mind he is. These are two great coaching hockey minds going against each other. And tactically, it's going to be a very interesting series. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Check us next time when we do whatever other shenanigans we do. Have a great day. Lots of Enjoy luck. Enjoy the game.